student uh, in the Certificate for Pastoral Studies program at Holy Trinity Seminary. Uh, originally uh, grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. And the title of his paper is The Legacy of St. Sergius and the Formation of Russian Identity. In 1939, Winston Churchill famously proclaimed that Russia is a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. For a typical Western observer, Churchill's views were an accurate way of describing Russia. At a quick glance, it's hard to understand the Russian lands by setting their tumultuous history that has numerous intrigues, misfortunes, glorious rises, and unfortunate falls. To really understand Russia, one has to look deeper into the Russian people and examine their character and discover their moral guide. Upon deeper examination of the Russian people, one will discover a concept known as the Russian soul. If you look at Russian history without understanding this Russian soul, then one's conclusion would fall similar to that of Churchill's. Understanding the Russian soul allows one to make sense of Russia and her history. The Russian soul is Russia's historical identity. It is Russia's spirituality and its moral compass. To understand the Russian soul, one has to study St. Sergius of Radonej and his Holy Trinity Monastery. Sergius and his monastery are the single most important factor throughout Russia's entire history that has continuously been the compass by which Russia has maintained and developed its Russian soul. Throughout the history of Russia, it is this Russian moral compass which has helped to unify the Russian people against invaders outside the country and from within. The Russian soul is evident in all aspects of culture and has provided a balance or opposing force to the ever-increasing Russian liberal ideas in the 19th and 20th century. The development of the Russian soul began with the baptism of Rus in 988. From this event, Russia received its spirituality, which has been its guide throughout the years. Since the 14th century, Sergius of Radonezh is the most important reason Russia has maintained this Russian soul. The famous Russian historian Vasily Kluchevsky writes, The name of St. Sergius evokes not only an edifying and joy-inspiring page of Russia's history, but it is also a bright trait of the Russian people's moral content. St. Sergius' life encapsulates the morals of the Russian people and provides a rallying point by which Russia has developed and maintained its unique, deeply spiritual character throughout the centuries. Much of what we know about the early life of Sergius of Radonezh comes from the writings of Epiphany the Wise, who wrote the life of Sergius in 1418. In his writings, Epiphany says that Sergius of Radonezh was born in the 14th century and baptized with the name Bartholomew. Even as a child, his life was shrouded with mysticism. When he was a child, he suffered from a learning deficiency and prayed that God would enlighten him with the ability to learn. One day, when he was traveling, he met a monk who gave him a piece of bread, saying that his prayers had been answered and he would receive understanding. Shortly after this, Bartholomew and his family moved to Radonezh. When his parents died, he began preparations to become a monastic. Even in his youth, Bartholomew showed signs that he would be a significant figure in Russian history. Upon becoming a monastic, Bartholomew took the name Sergius, and retreated into the wilderness to seek a life of solace and prayer. When living in the wilderness, he lived alone and shared meager provisions with animals, all the while tormented by evil spirits of the devil. Many monks sought to emulate Sergius' life and moved down to the wilderness with him. These new monks constructed twelve huts, which served as the humble beginnings for the foundation for the Holy Trinity Monastery. At the monastery, Epiphany writes, where once there was only forest, thicket, and wilderness, inhabited by rabbits, foxes, wolves, and an occasional bear, and where demons lurked, now stands a church, and a great monastery has come into existence. Sergius was a hard worker, who could do the work of two men, but was also deeply pious. He would wear very simple clothes and maintain a humble manner of living. Sergius lived in the wilderness in seclusion for a number of years until he was selected to become the abbot of the monastery in approximately the year 1354. Once Sergius became the abbot of Holy Trinity Monastery, he and his monastery became a central figure in the development of Russian monasticism. One of the most significant actions that Sergius does as abbot is to implement Cenobitic monasticism. This decision set the stage by which other Russian monasteries decided to organize themselves. While Cenobitism had existed before, Sergius made it work, and by his lifestyle defined the ideal by which monks were to live. Sergius' decision to accept Cenobitism for his monastery, encouraged it to grow and become an influential center in Russian history. Sergius' active participation in the politics of the state set the stage by which the history of the monastery would become deeply inter 
intertwined with that of the Russian state and culture. Sergius was the light on the hill, which continuously reminded the Russians to remember their Russian soul. Since the 13th century, Rus had been occupied by invading Mongol forces. These forces were actually not militant against the Orthodox Church. The Mongols allowed the religious life to continue, and even granted the church tax-free status. Unlike the church, the various cities and princes of Rus were required to pay tribute to the Mongol Khan. In 1359, Prince Dmitri Donskoy became the Grand Prince of Moscow. At that time, Rus had been under the Tartar yoke for about 200 years. The Grand Prince of Moscow became tired of Mongol oppression and decided to try and throw off the Tartar yoke. Knowing the difficulty of defeating the Mongols, Donskoy went to Holy Trinity Monastery to receive Sergius's blessing for the battle. It is significant to note that the Grand Prince of Moscow would travel to a relatively new monastery outside of Moscow to receive advice about how to defeat the Khan. This shows that Sergius and his monastery provided, provided a unique dimension to Russian history. Even from the earliest histories of Russia, one sees the intertwinement of political and spiritual leaders. When Donskoy first arrived at the monastery, Sergius told him to, quote, respect the evil Tatar Mamai with gifts of honor. Donskoy replied that he had done this, but that the Tartar was becoming more evil toward the Russian people. Sergius then blessed Prince Donskoy, saying, you will conquer your enemy. Ser Sergius proclaimed to Donskoy, go, my prince, go forward. God and the Holy Trinity will help you. When the prince went out to battle against the Mongols, Sergius is reported to have prayed throughout the battle. At the battle, Prince Donskoy success successfully beat the Mongols, and many people attributed the victory to the help of Sergius. Kluchewski writes concerning this battle, quote, The people accustomed to trembling at the mere mention of the word Tartars, at least, at last, plucked up courage and rose against the oppressors. This moral power, this feeling of courage and spiritual strength, was breathed into his contemporaries by St. Sergius. End quote. This was the first moment that Sergius was seen as a moral power that could directly influence Russian historical events. Ser Sergius and his monasteries directly influenced the Battle of Kalakova and shifted him from not only a spiritual leader, but also a leader of Russia itself. After the battle, Sergius and his monastery became, quote, inextric inextricably linked to the rise of Moscow and connected with the revival of Russia from the Mongol domination. The memory of Sergius would continue to be a strong anti-Tartar force until the eventual overthrow in the 16th century. Sergius's moral compass provided the moral spark to start the overthrow of the Mongol yoke. Sergius died a few years after the Battle of Kalakova, and immediately great veneration of him developed throughout the Russian lands. Many people came to venerate his remains at the monastery and prayed that he would intercede with God for them. This great devotion to Sergius was directly related to Holy Trinity Monastery's great economic and social rise in Moscow and throughout all of Russia. In the mid-16th century, the monastery was declared the official abbey of Moscow. The abbot of the monastery was now made an archimandrite and considered the highest archimandrite in the lands. The monastery's lands increased off the universal cult of the veneration of St. Sergius. This devotion to St. Sergius guaranteed that the monastery would have both a great spiritual and national significance throughout Moscow and Russia. After the Battle of Kolokova, Sergius's monastery continued to influence Russian history up until the present, due in part because of this economic influence that it developed. Holy Trinity Monastery has been able to provide spiritual moral direction because of the capital that it possesses. This capital has allowed it to heavily influence the Russian people. As was mentioned before, under the Mongol rule, churches were not subject to tax or persecution by the Mongols, and this helped many of them grow. Due to this policy, many lay people gave, to the land, gave their lands to monasteries, knowing that the Mongols would not take them. Monasteries also offered many services for people that brought in money. For example, the monastery would be given money from people for the monastics to pray for specific relatives or even themselves when they died. This was a large reason many people ended up giving their lands to monasteries. Holy Trinity Monastery increased its wealth with, with many of these reasons, but perhaps the number one reason why it was able to wield such economic influence was due to patronage. When Christianity first came to the Rus lands, it was understood that princes would help them with financial means. Many princes did this because they were pious, but also because they, they gained political influence by the support. Princes enjoyed donating money to monasteries because they knew the church would take care of the poor. Holy Trinity Monastery was no exception for receiving patronage from pa princes and nobles. Tsar Ivan IV even donated the stone enclosure of the monastery with 12 towers to the monastery. 
From all these donations and patronage, the economy of the monastery soared. In fact, in the 16th century, Holy Trinity Monastery's ec economy was so large that the state was the only institution to surpass Trinity in volume and geographical scope. The great economy of the Holy Trinity Monastery enabled to be intricately involved in the defense of Russia in both physical and cultural battles throughout Russia's history. The great economic influence of the monastery enabled it to maintain its moral compass for the Russian lands. Time and again, it is evident that Holy Trinity Monastery is a source of physical and mental defense from outside invaders to the Russian lands. The monastery provided another significant defense of Russia during the time of trouble. In 1598, when Fyodor I died, Russia was cast into a number of court intrigues. Revolts arose throughout the lands, and Russia threatened to be split up from the inside. Armed bands of Poles and Ukrainians roamed the Russian countryside, causing disorder among the people. Moscow tried to respond to the collapse of Russian society, but was only able to muster weak responses. During the time of troubles, Poles were even able to put up a false czar on the throne in hopes of pulling Russia into the Polish sphere of influence. During this great time of chaos and disorder, Holy Trinity Monastery once again became a uniting force for the Russians. At this time, Moscow was completely occupied by the Poles, and one of the last forces of opposition to the Poles was Holy Trinity Monastery. In 1608, the large invading force of the Poles came, to, came down from Moscow to sack one of the last defenses of Russia, Holy Trinity Monastery. For 16 months, the monastery withstood a siege by 30,000 Poles. The monastery repelled their attacks and never recognized the foreign regime. This was a turning point in which peoples along the Volga and the north began to rally to overthrow the Polish rule. The Archimandrite of the monastery rallied the Russian people to free Moscow and reestablish Russian rule. The Archimandrite even used the resources of the monastery to assist those who had suffered during the war. Within two years, the Russians had reclaimed Moscow and ended the time of troubles with the election of Michael Romanov as Tsar. The legacy of Sergius and his monastery once again provided the spark and resistance to overthrow the yoke of another invading power. As a moral compass of Russia, Sergius's monastery has even protected Russian leaders from threats with, from within the country. For example, when Peter the Great was young, his sister ruled for him as regent. Over time, as he grew up, Regent Sophia became more insistent on, insistent on holding on to her power. One night, young Peter felt threatened by Sophia and escaped to Moscow for safety in Holy Trinity Monastery. From the stronghold of the monastery, Peter was able to gain his rightful power to the throne. During this time, government officials and army officers would gradually defect from Sophia's rule to Peter's at Holy Trinity Monastery. In a way, the monastery became the head of government for a time. From the monastery, Peter was able to throw off the rule of, the, of his region and assume power. It's not just by chance that this event unraveled within the walls of Holy Trinity Monastery. As has been pointed out, the monastery has been a rallying point for justice and a catalyst for throwing off the yoke of oppressors. Whether it was from the Tartars, Poles, or an unrightful region, Holy Trinity Monastery provides, provided the needful spark to overthrow an oppressive ruler. One of the most significant times that Russia's identity was challenged was during the 19th and 20th century. At this time, Russia was at a turning point in its history. After the reforms of Peter the Great in the 18th century, Russia had begun its westernization. Unfortunately, some of these reforms were not in line with the moral values and identity that had defined the Russian people for hundreds of years. Spiritualism was on the decline in the court, and new Western ideas had come into Russia. Autocracy was on the verge of falling, and terrorism was rampant throughout the lands. International wars were arising, and chaos was spreading across the Russian lands. As Russia quickly spiraled into turmoil, Holy Trinity Monastery maintained its historical moral, com moral compass for the people. It attempted to root out the foreign ideas and restore Russia to its proper identity of spirituality. In the late 20th century, the Holy Trinity Monastery experienced a proliferation of printing to try and restore Russia to its historical spiritual roots. One of the main writings that was used by the monastery was called the Trinity Leaflets. These leaflets were extremely important pieces of religi religious literature. The leaflets became one of the most popular and widely disseminated series of religious pamphlets throughout Russia. The publication of these leaflets was begun by then-novice no Nikolai Rozhgezhensky. The monastery sent these leaflets throughout all of the Russian lands to try and bring people back to their moral values. The leaflets covered a wide amount of material, including the Ten Commandments, iconography, and examples of people who had lived a particularly exemplary spiritual life. 
As the printing of these leaflets continued, Holy Trinity Monastery even created a printing house to assist them with this work. Along with the leaflets, this printing house went on to print many other sources of religious literature to help the Russian people. Popular religious literature and other spiritual books were also printed. In about 10 years, there were more than 114 million leaflets printed by this shop. Rozhdesvinsky Rush, continued his work with the leaflets throughout most of his life, believing that people needed to be educated in patriotism and loyalty to the Tsar, and of course, to repent and return to orthodoxy. Even in the face of widespread antagonism to the historical Russian identity, the Holy Trinity Monastery continued to fight for Russian solidarity and spiritualism. In conclusion, throughout the history of Russia, there has been a continuous element fighting to maintain the historical Russian morality and spirituality. Many authors and artists have coined this morality and spirituality the Russian soul. The single most important factor in shaping and maintaining this Russian soul throughout Russia's history is St. Sergius of Radonezh and his monastery. From Sergius' strong moral life of humility and spirituality, he became a leader in 14th century Russia. From this leadership, he was a rallying point by which people overthrew the Mongols and restored Russia to its fullness. Once Sergius died, he became the most venerated saint in all of Russia. And the importance of his monastery to Moscow and Russia became deeply intertwined. The economy of the monastery greatly expanded with his death and his veneration. This great economy allowed the monastery to maintain its importance throughout the years and become a force to maintain Russia's identity. When an invading Catholic Polish force captured Moscow, it was the monastery and its abbot that was the catalyst to drive them out of Russia and restore Russian spirituality to the land. The monastery even supported the rightful Tsar Peter when Regent Sophia threatened him. Lastly, the Holy Trinity Monastery print shop was a leading force to try and turn the Russian people back to their Russian roots and away from the liberalism that was spreading across the Russian lands. Even Stalin realized the great importance of the monastery to the Russian people when he reopened the monastery in the 1940s to try and renew people's patriotism in the Russian lands. Now that communism has fallen, we can see Holy Trinity Monastery still standing strong 45 miles away from Moscow. Kluchevsky says, quote, The gates of the lavra of St. Sergius will be shut, and the lamps which burn over his tomb will be extinguished, only when we completely squander this stock of moral order without replenishing it, end quote. Even after the horrible effects of communism, Holy Trinity Monastery's lamps still remain, providing the needed moral compass to the Russian people. Thank you.